All right. So hello, hello, everybody. Come say hi in the chat. Introduce yourself. Tell us where you're joining from. Tell us what you're excited about, you know, what you're going to learn in this Exploring Academy webinar and anything else that you feel like sharing. You can also share your favorite emoji. We're here to improve our communication skills, our executive communication, our social fluency, and to be able to effectively communicate across various cultures, across various communication settings, doing different speech acts, being able to know how to communicate really, really well and effectively and enrich not only our social lives, but also the things that we want to do in life, you know, professionally, personally, if you have a bucket list that you want to, uh, you know, check off everything we do has to do with communication, right? And being able to communicate well is vital. It's a necessity. It's not a luxury. It is a necessity, right? We cannot live without communication and we cannot live without good communication. And you might have probably already figured that out now. So I see more people coming in. Wonderful. Hello, hello. Mireya is here. Samin is here. We've got Marve, Ruby, Ricardo. Um, some names I'm sorry, I cannot pronounce, but I'm so happy you're here. It's great to have everybody. So we today are going to be talking, you know, we have our theme this month, which is empathetic communication. And we've done various things within that so far. We've looked at the POM method, not just for enriching our own social interaction by being able to remember what we are going to say, but that's important too from an active listening perspective so that we can remember what other people say in social interaction and then be able to you know, bring that back into the conversation and say, oh, I remember you said that. How's it going now? Right? Asking for some more information, following up with the person because it shows that you've actively been listening. And then we have our whole uh, active listening challenge, which I highly recommend people take because it is a huge game changer. So that is February's challenge. And we have people who have already completed it. We have people who are currently doing it. So it is there for you. And when you're a member, you have access to that challenge indefinitely for the lifetime of your membership. So, you know, if you don't get around to it now, no biggie. You can do that when you have time, maybe next week or the week after. It's there for you. And also, as I was chatting with some members, you know, they liked it so much that they're also going to revisit it, right? Because these are very um, important strategies to know if you want to be an effective communicator, not just for life, but for work, for your social life, for anything we do, because it all requires communication. And effective communication, right? It's not even enough to just say communication. We have to say effective communication. All right. So with that, today our theme, again, keeping in mind the overall overarching and overall monthly theme of empathetic communication, within that we have nonviolent communication. And you might be a little bit surprised to know what this, this is and what it does. Um, but I think for most people, like when they think of this, they probably, well, what do you think of when you, when you see this phrase, what do you think of when you see nonviolent communication? What are some images that come to mind? What things can you conjure up? Feel free to share that in the chat. What does this mean to you? Just, you know, by looking at it now, even, even if you don't know anything about this and I don't expect anyone to know what this is because we're going to talk about it today. But even if you, you do know what it is, what images come to mind when you see nonviolent communication? I'm curious. Um, okay, well, you know me from the Academy, of course, Exploring Academy. You also know me from the YouTube channels and the Spotify and the podcasts. Um, I run several channels on YouTube and they're all about enriching you to become an effective communicator. And I help empower you to become the best communicator you can be for work and in life. So you can get the jobs that you want. You can speak the languages you want. 
when you know English well and you can communicate well, right? This is this is now your mastering communication, right? It unlocks so many incredible life-changing opportunities for you that you right now might not even be aware of. In other words, those incredible life-changing opportunities might not be even on your radar at this very moment. But just know that if you can master communication, you have literally the whole world at your beck and call. In other words, you are the world is your oyster, right? You are able to find the jobs you want, connect with the people you want, build the business you want, you know, marry the person you want. Really, it's it all comes down to all the things we're able to do with solid communication skills. So I'm here to help you do that. Uh, this is a little bit about my background. I have two masters and I have my BA from Hamilton College in New York. Got my master's, my first master's from Bacchashir University and my advanced master's, second master's from Columbia University. Um, so I love, I love what I do. It was, you know, something that I've always been passionate about nearly two decades now in this space of cross-cultural corporate communication, television, live broadcasting, education. And I bring all those experiences together and combine to create, you know, the content we create here and to have the academy we have here at Exploring Academy. I've been teaching and designing courses in communication and social skills and public speaking and English and French uh, and cross-cultural communication and business communications for 16 years. And I like to emphasize technology, empirical research, data-backed teaching, teaching methodologies so that you get the best of the best. And you'll know that, you know, our content is very different from, you know, maybe other things that you see out there. Our academy is a unique learning opportunity and professional development platform. There's none uh, other like it. So it's fun to it's fun to, to do what we do here. Um, I also teach teachers how to teach. So I've done that both overseas and also in New York um, at Baruch College, Hunter College and Columbia University. And my first kind of foray into the space of cross-cultural communication, which is part of what we do, at the academy and you know you in my content you see on youtube and in the you know podcasts and whatnot cross-cultural communication right because it's an increasingly globalized society and world that we live in which is a great thing and we have to be able to know how to communicate effectively across cultures right within subcultures within various cultures around the world because that's what it is if you're in a bit if you're a business person you're doing international business Right. Even if you live in the country that you grew up, you I bet your company has international people working there and you might be in interacting with people from all over the world. Right. Particularly in this remote um, digitalized society, which is, again, amazing. Right. We're able to connect with each other. So I got the Fulbright grant and that's originally what kind of. Uh, I would say planted my the seed of that cross-cultural communication in a uh, professional capacity because you know um, I've I I love learning different languages I love learning about different cultures and that all comes in so you know this idea of nonverbal communication nonviolent communication rather is interesting it was put forth by Marshall Rosenberg and it's essentially what you can think of it as, as a way to foster empathy and understanding, you know, digging beneath the surface and understanding how to connect with somebody, you know, in a way that is going to foster empathy and promote understanding, be their differences, be their, you know, uh, variance in your emotional resonance, like you might not be particularly you know, happy that day. So maybe you take it out on somebody. Well, this is about not taking out it out on somebody, right? Part of it is understanding not just 
what that means within our intrapersonal communication, right? How do we know, you know, how to communicate properly to ourselves, right? That self-talk, but also treating others with kindness as well. And really trying to understand. If you might not understand at first, that's completely, you know, natural. We don't just understand everybody right off the bat but putting ourselves in their shoes, trying to see what they want, what we want, if there's some overlap, is there is there alignment everywhere, anywhere? You know, how can we how can we align in some way shape or form, right? So this is in a nutshell what this is. Okay? And it's very powerful. And it applies both to our personal lives and our professional lives. So you can use this in the office as well as at home, right? So it enhances empathy. And because it enhances empathy, it strengthens rapport. It creates more solid connections, right? So you have that, you know, closeness to somebody. You have that affinity for interacting with them. It also helps prevent misunderstandings and diminishes the, you know, risk of conflict, right? So it's amazing because when you might be on the verge of having a fight with somebody or, you know, you're butting heads with somebody, maybe at work, when you implement nonviolent communication strategies, it immediately can diffuse tension, right? Dissipate that feeling of, you know, uh, tension or conflict that might be brewing. And also when you do have moments of conflict, you actually get to talk it out. You get to facilitate clearer and constructive dialogue because we can't always prevent conflict, right? That's just not possible. We have to find a way to be able to understand what somebody wants and then be able to express what we want as well, right? And to try to find common ground, negotiate, figure out, you know, a possible outcome that is favorable to both parties or all parties involved. And you don't have to get there by pushing and shoving and, you know, screaming and crying. You can get there through nonviolent communication. Okay, so we've got four components. There's observation, there's feeling, there's need and request, right? So observation is not the same thing as um, like judging, right? When you're observing, you're leaving judgment out of it. So observation, in other words, observation and evaluation are different things, right? So on one hand, you have the evaluation, which is, you know, you're evaluating somebody and you're going to, you know, potentially be judging them or categorizing them or whatever they're doing, right? With nonviolent communication, you're actually just an observer. You're not there to judge. You're not there to comment on, you know, whatever it is you could potentially be judging them for, right? How do you feel when you, you're judged? Do you feel good or do you... <laughs> do you feel not so good? What is that like? Share in the chat. What does that feel like when somebody is judging you? What does that feel like? Yeah. Yeah. Mireya says intimidated. Absolutely. Absolutely. And when we're intimidated, it's really hard to try to talk things out. You know, logic goes out the window we're then, then hyper focused on ourselves we're hyper vigilant we might be anxious we might be socially anxious intimidated absolutely for sure so we really want to make sure that we're not judging somebody okay feeling right you're thinking about what feeling what are the feelings that i'm feeling what are the feelings that i'm feeling can you list some like just emotions that you might have? And you don't have to necessarily just have one emotion that you carry the conversation with. It could be multiple, right? It, it's not like there's just one emotion that, um, 
you know, is the, sets the mood for the day, we're constantly experiencing various emotions throughout the day. And within even a single conversation, we could exp be experiencing various emotions. So can you think of any just that you've already had as you've started your day, or maybe for some of you, it's afternoon or evening? Like what have, what have been some of the emotions? Just share some in the chat. Anything? It be like happiness, sadness, um, you know, anything like excitement or anxiousness or <laughs> anything, any feelings. Okay, stressed out. That's, yeah, I'm not going to say that's a good one, but that's a great example, Ruby, um, for sure, for sure. So the point is we have all these different emotions and these feelings. Um, so that's important to recognize like how we are feeling. If we cannot understand how we are feeling, then it's going to be very difficult to try to express how we're feeling to somebody else. So, you know, you might tell somebody, let's say, you know, somebody is constantly showing up late for your, um, you know, you, you meet maybe once every every so often with this with this friend of yours and you every time you have lunch with them they're always late right that happens for sure um we've all been late right i mean i know very few people who are very very punctual all the time that's an amazing asset really but the reality is that just doesn't always happen right so if you say to somebody you're always late i really don't like that that's more violent communication, right? That's more like traditional, even violent communication. And don't think of violent as like actual, you know, it's, it's, it's verbally violent, if you could say, if you could call it that. Instead, right, if we want to really implement the non-violent communication tactics, we would say something more like, I feel sad when you consistently show up late to our lunch luncheons you know i i feel sad about it i feel i feel like you're not valuing my time and our time spent together do you see how different those two ways of communicating are right instead of saying you make me feel unimportant i i feel i feel sad about it i feel like you're not taking our friendship seriously when you show up one hour late Right. So this is this is part of that feeling aspect, but it really starts with us. We need to be able to, first of all, identify the emotions we are experiencing and then be able to label them. Right. And then express them and put those two things together, like what we're feeling and what made us feel that way. And it's not the person necessarily. Right. It's notice how. I feel sad when our luncheons start late or when we, you know, don't get to see each other as often as we can, right? There's some, sometimes like, you know, you might have a friend who cancels on you last minute. That can be very hurtful, particularly if you were looking forward to that engagement. And so this would be a great opportunity for you to voice that to somebody, not in a violent way, but in a nonviolent way. So that's the feeling part. The need part, okay, the need part is about, so we've identified and labeled and expressed the emotions, right? The feelings. But we can also do that with needs and desires and values that are at the root of our feelings. So we have the feeling. So think of the feeling as the leaves of, you know, the tree itself, the leaves and the tree trunk. And then the need is the are the roots right the roots of the tree which support the tree right so it's very important to be able to voice that um you know the needs are universal and they're never in conflict in this approach in this nonviolent approach right so you have to remember that voicing your needs is part of this so if somebody, you know, says, I need to feel valued and respected in our friendship, that right there is the need, right? They want to feel 
like you care about them. And that's why they were so hurt when you canceled on them last minute. Okay, so that's the need portion portion of this. And then request, right? You want to then express and clearly state what we would like to happen so that we can enrich our lives without demanding it specifically, right? You're not demanding, you're voicing it. You're saying what you would like, it's a request, right? So they're specific, these requests are actionable. And the big thing here is that they are present focused. So they're, they're rooted in the present, right? The other thing that's really important when you're expressing this request it's not saying, you know, I, I request you to do this. We're not phrasing it that way. It's more so you want to say it in a positive way with action language, right? You're specifying what action would meet our needs, whatever needs they are. What is the action that would express that need that you have instead of saying what you don't want, right? I don't want you to be late all the time. I don't want you to cancel on me. That's not that's not a request. That's not helpful whatsoever. That just sounds like somebody is whining and and you know being possibly even a little bit aggressive, right? So for example, after you express your need, you could make a request such as would you be willing to agree on a specific time that we can hang out and stick to it? So that you know, the person doesn't have to cancel on you, right? So when you integrate these four components of NVC, nonviolent communication, you are able to not only understand what you want and what you need, but also you're able to express that to somebody else, right? All communication, all interpersonal communication starts with the intrapersonal communication, right? In other words, it starts with that mon monologue that we have with ourselves, right? It starts with us talking to ourselves about certain things, right? That we all do it. This is self-talk. We're talking to ourselves all day, every day. This is self-talk. So it starts with that. So we need to understand what we want, what we need, how we feel before we can actually express that. Right. And this type of communication is what helps to create, you know, rapport, build trust, create closer bonds with people, fostering deeper understanding and connection with others. And you can do this with everybody, everybody, you know. So it's really incredible because this type of communication encourages us to focus on our shared human values. Right. We're never forgetting that we're human. And it sounds kind of silly. Oh, you know what I mean? Forget someone's human. But think of it. If you treat somebody with a lack of respect, with violent communication, with complete disregard for their feelings, you're not treating them as a human. If somebody does, does that to you, they're not treating you as a human, right? We have to remember this. How would you like to be spoken to? It's the same way as that, you know, that is how you would speak to others. So focusing on our shared human values and our needs, which creates harmony and is more constructive. It's constructive dialogue, which is remarkable. So when we're thinking about using this at work, like I said, you can use this at work, which is wonderful. Let's say, you know, you have a team meeting and people have all different, you know, opinions and ideas and people are voicing those opinions and ideas and maybe, you know, they're not being voiced in a nice way, perhaps, um, you know, people might start to get aggressive or passive aggressive. That's not what we want. But active listening can really help because you're listening for what they're expressing, right? The emotion behind it. How are they explaining it to you? Not just the words they use, right? There's actually very little communicative power from just words alone. Professor Albert Meridian talks about that breakdown, right? Um, and so we really have to also consider the nonverbal communication, which makes up so much more of the communicative power that we all have, 
right? So the tone of voice, the facial expressions, the micro expressions, the body language, the gestures, the tonality, the emphasis on certain words, all of this, right? So that is what's amazing about active listening because you can really tone in to those things, tune in and dial, dial into that portion of the communicative power that we all have. So in a team meeting, you want to be listening for this, label the emotions that they might be expressing and fine tune your approach by thinking about those four components, right? Of non violent communication, observation. So you're observing, you're not evaluating, right? Nobody wants to be judged, right? You're observing, you're feeling, you're understanding the feelings behind it, your feelings behind it, their feelings behind it, the need, and then the request. Okay, what about with conflict resolution? So conflicts are inevitable, right? They're bound to happen. But with nonviolent communication, not only can we have, do we have a higher chance of preventing those conflicts from arising in the first place, but we also have a possibility and great potential to dissolve those conflicts, dissolve that tension, make it a instead more collaborative space and place for coming up with solutions right? We can problem solve so much better in groups with people brainstorming as a team, as opposed to just, you know, all by our lonesome. So thinking about how to resolve conflict, if there is one together, right? And coming up with collaborative solutions. So working together as a team, level setting on expectations, aligning on goals, and doing that in a way that's very respectful, thoughtful, empathetic, judgment-free, observation-focused, and feeling-driven. Okay, so here are already two examples of how we can use this at work. All right, so in terms of real-world application and phrases, when you're receiving critical feedback, Right. We talk about this a lot. Feedback is so important. And there are times in our, you know, in our work, work lives, uh, you know, not just work, but in life in general, people will give you feedback. And it's not always expressed in the kindest of ways. Right. You've had that experience. Right. So with critical feedback, you want to be, especially if you're the one giving it. You want to be very um, attuned to this way of communicating, nonviolent communication, right? So when you're receiving critical feedback, you might, this is a phrase, right? You can use, when I hear you say, and you put the observation there, you know, you're always late to, uh, on, on deliverables, you're always late on deliverables, or the deliverables are always incomplete. I feel blank, right? What's that feeling you feel? Because I need blah, 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 blah. Could we try this instead? Um, so that could be from the perspective of somebody, you know, who is receiving the feedback, but you could also be the person giving the feedback with a few tweaks here, right? When I observe, this kind of behavior. I feel this way. And the reason I feel this way is because what I need is this, right? I need these deliverables to be complete and on time. Could we work together to figure out a solution that would allow these deliverables to be complete and on time? So yeah, it's gonna. It's not going to be a short little sentence, right? You can always break these up into four sentences, but you want to make sure that it has all these components. Remember the components, observation, feeling, need, request, O-F-N-R. We don't have a, 
an, uh, an acronym for it like we do with the palm method, but just remember OFNR, observation, feeling, need, request. So these all kind of work together. When I hear you say that and the observation is there, this is how I feel and I feel this way because I need this. And then you make the request, could we try again? Could we collaborate on this? Could we check our schedules and see if we align on due dates? Could we have follow-up meetings? Could we connect over Slack to see if we've, you know, we're, we're on target, we're on track, right? So this is very, very powerful. And again, this is one of the scenarios, right? Receiving critical feedback, okay? Or giving cr critical feedback. All right, what about when addressing team performance? So I've observed specific behavior, which makes me feel, how does it make you feel? Because it affects our teams, something, something, right? And explain what the need is, like the team's need. Can we explore ways to? So this is a different way to phrasing it, right? Again, the request comes at the end because what you're doing is you're first starting with the observation of that behavior of, of the, or of that thing that's a problem. And again, we're separating the person from the problem. It's not, let's not conflate the two, which also helps us keep judgment out of it. The person and the problem are separate. You're not labeling, labeling the person as that problem. You're not labeling the person at all, really. So you're looking at that specific behavior. And then you're saying how that behavior, how does it impact you? How does it make you feel? Do you feel undermined? Do you feel stressed out? Do you feel like there's a lack of respect? How do you feel? And then how is it impacting the team overall, right? What's that need that we have that it is getting in the way of us achieving? And then what's that final request? This is the aha moment where it's like the action part, right? It needs to be positive and action oriented. It is a call to action. In other words, what do you want them to do? But it's not just them that's going to do it, right? They're not just the ones who are going to do it. You're going to help them. It's collaborative. It's not like you're just going to go out and say, okay, go do this thing, go fix this thing, go solve this problem. It's like we collectively, we are going to get to the bottom of this issue. We are going to resolve this issue. We're going to find a workaround. We're going to find a solution. We're going to ensure that this doesn't keep happening. Okay. So that could be the team performance um, implementation, right? Well, where you use NVC in this specific type of scenario. So much better, right? So much better than those traditional, you know, ways of addressing uh, a, 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 you know, problematic behavior or an issue with the team members or anything where it's like blame focus. We don't like that. That's not helpful. That's not constructive. This is constructive. This is collaborative, right? We, right? Notice the language. Can we explore ways? So again, we're highlighting this because it is such a game changer. And of course, Part of the ability to do this is through active listening. So if you're not actively listening, it's going to be very difficult to do this, right? So again, it boils down to being able to positive, constructive, effective communication boils down to also being able to understand each other, which we can only do through active listening and putting ourselves in that person's shoes and trying to get to the bottom of whatever it is that might be ailing them or getting them off track in any way. All right, we can also use this in our relationships, right? So it's a beautiful type of communication tactic because it's versatile. Okay, so navigating difficult conversations with partners or family members. Don't mind that addressing team performance. There's a little typo there. But with 
conversations that you might have with family members or partners, you can use this, right? So you can immediately set with someone at ease and say, what I'm about to share might be a little bit like stressful for you to hear. But my intention is, so you kind of frame it with positive intentionality. So my intention is to make sure that we are aligned on our values. And, you know, it would be very helpful if you could um, pick up the kids when I'm doing this thing, when I have that, you know, uh, business meeting. Or it would be super helpful if you, you know, got dinner on the table if um, I'm not available, you know, I'm not, I'm not home yet or something. Um, it would be great if you could just clean up after yourself. If you know, <laughs> there's not really an if. If just remember, right? But anyway, so these difficult conversations you might have with friends, with partners, with family members. You want to consider the nonviolent communication approach and framing it with positive intentionality. So immediately setting them at ease and saying, look, this might be difficult for you to hear, but my intention is to, and then state your intention, to make sure that we're on the same page, to make sure that we're really work as a team, to make sure that, you know, our kids get, you know, pick, pick, uh, picked up from school, to make sure that our food gets on the table, to make sure that our dogs get taken out, um, to make sure that whatever, whatever, whatever. So that's really great. And you want to be able to do this without blame or judgment, right? You don't want to say, oh, you're always late to pick up the kids or you never make dinner on time or you never, right? That's not helpful. That's violent communication. That is blame centric. It is judgment zone galore. And we don't like that. That leads to conflict. That leads to more problems. That leads to resentment. That leads to a slew of other things that we don't need to have. So instead, we take the nonviolent communication approach. We state positive intentionality. We say, look, this might be difficult to hear. So it kind of like primes them, right? Instead of just like blurting out the thing and just like kind of, you know, deflates any kind of tension there might be. And then you express your needs without judging or blaming somebody. Okay. What are some of the challenges and misconceptions about this lovely communication strategy? Well, it's not about just being nice, right? I have a whole lesson about how you actually shouldn't try to be nice. It's not about being nice. You want kindness, you want respect, you want empathy. Those are the things that we actually strive for, not nice. Nice has this kind of negative connotation where it's just like, oh, I'm just going to be nice, right? It's like, no, there's more, there's more to it than that. So it's not about being nice or avoiding conflict because, again, you can't completely 100% avoid conflict. We, we don't really know how somebody's going to react or respond, right? We are only in control of how we can communicate. So we don't know if somebody's having a rotten day and uh, we don't know what they've been doing up until this point that we chat with them, right? They might tell us, but we don't actually know. We haven't experienced that through their you know, eyes. So we don't know. So there are going to be moments where even if you do everything perfectly, again, I don't like that word, but perfectly, you know, in the sense that you do everything the way you intended to and 10 out of 10, let's say, you might still get a, a negative reaction. You might still have a situation where you find yourself in a conflict, even though you didn't do ne anything wrong necessarily, right? So always remember that you can't fully control avoiding conflict. It's going to happen, but we need to be prepared to mitigate the effects of, you know, conflict and the aftermath and trying to come to a resolution, take a collaborative approach. So you can use nonviolent communication for sure. What you really want to strive for here are two keywords, right? We've got authenticity. So approaching it as you, full, fully you, right? Not somebody else, not your alter ego, not your, the person you were 10 years ago, not the, 
you know, the, like, how would I say this? Like a worse version of yourself. No, you're authentic to you. You're not being somebody else. You're not copying somebody else. You're being you and you're being vulnerable, right? Why vulnerable? Because a lot of times people don't like to talk about how they feel, right? They don't want to show certain emotions because that might be construed as weakness. Guess what? It's not a weakness. It's an imperative side to show because that vulnerability is what gets us closer to achieving rapport, to building trust, to creating a closeness, to bonding, to ex having that shared human experience. We're all vulnerable at times. And there's there's not an issue showing that, right? Nonverbal, non, I keep saying nonverbal, but it's nonviolent communication that helps us get to the heart of this authenticity and vulnerability, being able to express those things. So we're going to practice these uh, with different scenarios for work and at, you know, in life in general, we're going to practice these in our executive coaching call. So for those of you who want to have a little bit more, uh, you know, hands-on learning, try these strategies out yourselves. I always say, try these out. You've got to try them out and that's great. But then you also, the feedback component is crucial because we want to make sure that we're headed in the right direction, right? The compass pointing north is great, but are we really, is that true north? Are we really, you know, north? So figuring out, you know, um, how you might apply this to your own scenarios in life. And, you know, we have various ones that we're going to be going through and you can come with questions. We'll be going through them. We'll be getting the giving feedback and it'll be a great, great time. It always is. But I think that, you know, this is one of them that it's so crucial to be able to know how to do this and to always have it in your back pocket because it's, it's, it's a game changer for changing the tone of a conversation and all the, all of the, you know, the effects of either positive or negative communication. And, and this promotes that positive communication, right? At work, in life, with your friends, your family, your close, close circle. So I highly recommend you come and join us for that. I also want to remind you that we have our active listening challenge, right? This is still part of our monthly theme, which is it's always going to be relevant, active listening. It's a very important skill to be able to harness and use, and you'll be much more empowered to, you know, participate in conversations and voice your opinions and share thoughts with people and also listen to them truly understand them and the act of listening is part of what helps us do the nonviolent communication so well as well so we've got that and some of our members have you know shared some of their thoughts um, and i would love for you to see here so the active listening challenge was like a vehicle that brings us closer to make us excel in communication we learned great strategies to keep engaging with other members in the community while participating in meaningful conversations. So that's Mireya who said that. And then Simon says, I recommend the active listening challenge to everyone because it enhances empathy and understanding, which is crucial in any relationship, 100%, right? And also by improving this skill, individuals discover new golden techniques to become a better communicator in their personal and professional lives. So these meaningful conversations, being able to communicate effectively in various settings across personal and professional communication contexts, active listening is going to be an integral part of that. So as we know, and as I mentioned at the start of this, you know, gosh, I wish more people realized this, my friends. The ability to communicate effectively is not just an asset, right? Meaning it's not just a luxury, uh, an amazing thing to have. It is a necessity. It is a must. And it is only getting more and more important as our society becomes increasingly more global, increasingly more digitized. We need to be able to communicate well, effectively, have that communicative competence to excel in all areas of life, excel in your relationships, 
have a fulfilling and meaningful life, have those social connections that you're so grateful for, have that job and those work opportunities and the professional opportunities that you're so grateful for, be able to travel the world, see the things you wanna see, explore the places you wanna explore. It all comes down to effective communication. So here at Exploring Academy, we understand the pivotal role that communication plays both in your professional life and your personal growth and your social lives. Our platform is meticulously designed to enhance your executive communication skills, your interpersonal abilities, and your overall social fluency and your fluency in the art of expression. And we also do a lot of, you know, intrapersonal work and mindset work as well, because again, it starts from here and here. We gotta, we gotta check in with ourselves to know what we're, we're, what we're experiencing. So whether you're navigating complex discussions at work or you're fostering deeper connections in your personal life, we are here to elevate your communicative competence and your social fluency. So this is a must have, a must have. Um, we've got our Exploring Academy plan. So you see here, this is, this is what, what it is. Uh, lots of, so every day there's something to do. We have weekly calendars, we have daily uh, tasks. So daily quests and tasks. We've got monthly themes, we got monthly challenges. We've got, you know, the previous challenges too are all there. Um, you know, you can always revisit them and do them. Self-paced web courses. You've got the ability to join interest groups as well. I'm gonna talk about that in a second. So how do you know if Exploring Academy is for you? Well, here are some of the ways you know it's for you. You really want to improve, improve your social fluency, right? You want to feel more connected with people, with people at work, with people at, you know, in life in general, you know, your social circles. And especially now, you know, when our world is getting increasingly more digital and sometimes a little isolating and we want to really find our tribe. We want to network with people. We want to make friends. We want to meet people from around the world. We want to meet people from various industries. We want to practice our communication skills. Uh, maybe you, you seek that professional polish so that you can get ahead at work, get promoted, get your dream job, do your dream job, start a company, do your biz, grow your business, all these things. Maybe you want to dive deeper into mastering these skills, right? And if you do, we've got the supportive, engaging, environment and our community is growing we've got a lot of people in here who are very committed to social fluency to executive presence and communication to communicating as best they can so that they can live their best life then we've also got the group coaching executive communication program so these are small um, this is a small group coaching experience it's a community of practice. It's really wonderful because you get to, you know, we get to not only try these strategies out, hone them, but we get the feedback, right? You get feedback that's personalized. You get to be able to practice these things, try them out, get the feedback, meet other people, talk with them, make friends, practice and practice and practice. And it's essential to practice. That's the only way we can actually get better at something. Any skill, any skill on the planet that you want to learn or you want to, you know, improve requires practice and consistency. So every week we're getting on there, we're doing our calls, we're practicing. There's worksheets, there's quests, there's materials. So it's, it's really great. Um, we've also got social pods. So you get to kind of find your tribe, right? Get together with people who have similar interests to you. And this is a really powerful gateway to forging real connections, have enriching exchanges, um, you know, find people who uh, have similar interests to you and learn different things, right? It is still a community of practice, which is very powerful. Community is so powerful. Um, and it's an antidote to loneliness. It helps us you know, we need that social connection in our lives. It helps us live longer, right? That too. 
helps us get the jobs we want. This all comes down to the positive, effective communication. Um, and you get to you get to make friends, you get to network, you get to talk with people. So you get these casual calls and get to chat with people from you know different parts of the world, from different industries, and you know, talk about things that you really love and you enjoy. So we've got that. And then I want to say, you know, if you're interested in joining, you should definitely talk to your HR department. So if you're working right now, if you're employed, talk to your HR department and ask them to support your growth, right? You, uh, you have this professional development platform. We built it for you. It is for you. All you have to do is show up, right? We did all the heavy lifting. Now it's just your turn to come in there, put your best foot forward, practice, practice, practice without perfection. No one's asking for perfection, but we are asking for consistency. So you come in because that's how you that's how you get real results. You will get results if you show up and do the work. You will. I promise you. We have so many success stories and I've seen it firsthand, all the transformations. You will get the results you seek, but you have to show up. So I highly encourage you to talk to your HR, your human resources, or, you know, your learning development team. Sometimes they have different names for it in the communities that are in the um, companies you might be part of. Companies can be communities too. Ask them to support your growth. So this is how you can approach it. You know, you can talk about the benefits. So talking about, you know, how improving your communication skills can enhance team collaboration, your leadership abilities, overall workplace efficiency and productivity. You can show the return on investment, right? The ROI. Show um, how Exploring Academy's programs, our programs, our web courses, our challenges, our content, our, all of the things we do here are designed to deliver, deliver tangible, meaning you can feel it, you can touch it, you can sense it, tangible improvements, right? Those results that we talked about in communication, which in turn can contribute to achieving business objectives, right? So you get to do your job way better than you ever could if you didn't improve your communication skills. Um, and then the professional development policy. So check what that is. See if your most companies already have a professional development policy. So if your company already has this for professional development, maybe learn about it, familiarize yourself with it. You know, what's the stipend? How much do they give you? Or, you know, we um, we have all of our pricing and everything. And you can see that right at first hand what that is. So you can you can tell them, you know, this I have I have found this amazing professional development program for my communication skills, my executive skills, my social skills, my interpersonal communication skills. And you can share that uh, with them. Um, Simon here says, you can check the Academy videos and see my progress in six months. Yes, absolutely. Like you can, act, we have self-assessments in the community so you can track your progress. We also have the recorded um, executive coaching sessions, again, where you can track your progress. So you can see such amazing shifts and transformations and all these success stories. You can see it. You can viscerally, these are visceral, you know, tangible results that you can see. And if you can see it, others can see it too. So thank you for sharing that, Simon. That's a really great example. Um, so I really, really want to get this point across. Investing in your communication skills is investing in your future. So set your future self up for success, set your current self up for success and invest in your communication skills. Come and join us, come and join the Academy. Um, I'm gonna share with you what our members are saying. We have two plans. One is the Exploring Academy plan. One is the Executive Communication Lab Group Coaching plan. So you just have to decide if you want more of a self-paced um, yet fully supported journey, you know, you still get feedback and whatnot on the written assignments and on the challenges and the quests. Um, or if you want more hands-on 
approach with like an intimate setting where we're on a video call together, you're testing out the strategies, you're doing like the worksheets and you're getting feedback, right? You're getting that crucial component. Um, and then you can also, you know, see your, your progress as well. So again, I would really encourage you find out what your professional dev development stipend is, right? How much you have to spend on your professional development and come in and join us. Um, if you want more materials, just contact me and I'm happy to share um, the materials that you can send to your HR. Uh, we'll have a whole thing in the academy for that too. So uh, members, I'm, I'm, I'm going to share that with you very soon. And yeah, just that's, that's really uh, what I really want to emphasize. Just ask your HR at, to cover it because it is professional development and see if they, you know, if they're amenable to that. So what are some of our members saying? So Simone says that, uh, so when she wrote this, it had only been two months in. Now she's been here for, I guess, six months, right, Simone? So I joined Exploring Academy, and at that point it was two months. And she says, let me see, let me, I can make this a little bit bigger for me. Um, let me make that a little bit bigger. There we go. And I'm absolutely amazed by the progress I've achieved in refining my workplace skills and boosting my confidence in, in starting conversations within the English speaking community, attending every live session and actively participating, practicing real communication skills has not only enhanced my English proficiency, but has also been invaluable for improving my overall communication abilities. So do you see some of the themes here that Simon is pointing out, right? These workplace skills, boosting confidence, uh, you know, she's showing also that she's an active participant, active participant, right? That's crucial. That's, that's how you're going to improve. I can give you, I've got hundreds of videos. I think it's like thousands of hours at this point on my YouTube channels, right? On my Spotify's that's, that's separate from the community. So, you know, it's one thing to just like do all that, but it's another thing to actually come in and just consistent, consistent, focus, focus, practice, practice. So you've got to, you've got to be consistent. You've got to be consistent. So you can check out those hundreds of videos, hundreds of lessons. I invite you to do that. And then if you want more from us, come here and keep showing up. I want to express my heartfelt gratitude to our teacher, Mary Daphne, for her guidance and support. Having incredibly knowledgeable instructors who encourage you to seize opportunities has been the golden key that Exploring Academy has provided me. I wholeheartedly recommend Exploring Academy to anyone seeking success in today's fast paced world. Lovely. Thank you, Simon, for that wonderful testimonial. And then we've got Sira, who says, throughout most of my life, I've battled social anxiety. Joining Exploring Academy has empowered me to overcome my fears and shut down my BS. Each baby step in this supportive environment has been transformative, boosting my confidence in both personal and professional interactions. Another wonderful expression of how she feels about joining. Thank you, Sada, as well. Um, and then we've got Marco who says, I've enrolled in the executive program. Um, so he came to do one of our challenges, the executive communication challenge. And he's talking about how it's been a true treasure to join this program of skills development improvement. It's very well made with a lot of features that are useful to train and to empower skills for professionals at the highest level. Thank you very much for the, all of this. I'm sure it's for sure worth the investment. So thank you very much again for everything. Wonderful. Saval says both Mary Daphne and all the members of the community are so sweet and smiling that you never get bored. You don't understand how time flies with this community. I had the opportunity to improve my communication skills as well as my language. I have the opportunity to see and correct my mistakes with frequent community meetings, right? So there's that feedback aspect, right? That's crucial to really moving forward. Helder says, I had to give a work presentation and I use the tips I learned from the community and everyone loved it. This community is different because it's not just about learning English, but it's focused on practical communication skills and real life situa situations. That's right. We do communication training here, right? Professional development training. Of course, if you are a second language learner, your English will improve because that's the vehicle through which we are communicating. 
but you can also apply these communication strategies to your L1 language if you are an L2 native, uh, L2 speaker of English. So we have people who are both native English speakers and non-native English speakers. This, like I said, is for people who want to improve their executive communication skills, their social fluency, their social skills, their confidence, their social emotional intelligence, their interpersonal skills, their intrapersonal communication skills. And that all goes and fits nicely under communicative competence. So Raquel says, I don't get to use English in my daily life, so I find it very enriching to have the opportunity to exchange with people from different countries and to learn about their customs and opinions on current affairs. Being in small groups allows us to be active in discussions and to lose our fear of public speaking. And MD is always there to push us and help us if we hesitate or we don't know a word. So again, one of the highlights here too is that that stage fright, right? That fear of public speaking, it goes by a few names, social anxiety, public speaking fear, fear of public speaking, uh, stage fright. This starts to disappear, okay? Because you're on these calls, you're getting the feedback, you're boosting that confidence, you're feeling more invested, more involved, more a part of a community, something that's bigger than any one individual, right? We are part of something amazing. We are part of something big and growing and just incredible. That's the power of community. And, you know, it's great. Mireya says, best investment, you won't regret it. I'm forever grateful to Mary for creating such a caring human connector platform in which we learn and practice to effectively communicate with others. That's terrific. Um, so there you go. Best investment. You won't regret it. And then Marva says, Exploring Academy is very different from any training I've attended so far. Talking in small groups and everyone in the group participating in the conversations increases my self-confidence in speaking English in different social situations, right? So again, the small groups, being able to participate, having ample time to actually try strategies out and talk and practice and get the feedback and in different social settings, right? Work, life in general, personal, all we do all of it. We do all the things. Um, Marvis says, MD encourages everyone to speak in workshops and discussion sessions. She takes care of everyone individually and takes great care so that everyone benefits. They're very nice. Thank you. Thank you both of you for that. Um, and then Dom says, Exploring Academy is the best enrollment I've, I've done in a training program. I'm here to improve my professional English skills, uh, executive communication and social skills. I believe this is a great tool and more people to join should join. Dom said it's a tool, right? You see how people, you see how members are talking about what we do here, right? These are their words. So it's resonating, right? People are here. They feel how instrumental this is for their lives, for their work, for their enjoyment, for their longevity too. I really enjoy the workshops Mary Daphne delivers in her paid membership. I encourage people to sign up. I clear my schedule to participate in these workshops. That's terrific. So again, it's about make, carving out the time, right? We have all the things there. There's hundreds of hours of content, hundreds of, um, you know, things for you to do. It, it's jam packed with activities and things. And I give you a weekly calendar to organize everything um, so that you know exactly what to do on what day. And then of course you can do more. You can look at the other calendars. The calendars are always up there. So if you've done everything that you've done for that day and you want something more, you can always look at another calendar and get more things to do. Or you can just peruse our libraries our, of challenges, content, library, our, our web courses, and do more there. You can also look at the replays of, of coaching sessions, learn from the workshops there. So there's so much to do. You just have to carve out the time, right? Make the time to invest in yourself. And again, talk to your HR to see if they can cover this. Um, okay, and then Ashika says, my goals are to become more socially savvy and build emotional intelligence with people. Absolutely. Mary Daphne is an excellent teacher and communicator. Thank you so much. Her skills surely rub off on you as she eases you into better habits and makes everyone feel comfortable as the instructor and facilitator. I'm already experiencing subtle shifts by learning from everyone and MD. That's right. We learn from each other as well. I'm here, yes, and I teach, but we also learn from each other. That's, again, one of my other favorite things about a community. We're all 
learning and sharing knowledge and, and, and providing feedback and encouragement and, and all these wonderful things. Um, the community's international diversity is the perfect practice ground to interact in multicultural settings. Another one of my favorite things, we have people from all over the world. And when we get on video calls, it's really cool because we might be in different time zones, but we all carve out the time to be together in that moment, just like we did here today, right? We, we're all in different time zones. We all carved out time to invest in ourselves and to be here. I feel comfortable to say things without thinking too much, as long as I put it across with integrity and grace, something that Exploring Academy integrates in its modules. And then we have Edwin who says the style of interaction in exploring is cutting edge, incorporating, incorporating innovative elements of teaching a second language. My speaking skills have improved in my daily interactions and I have surpassed some typical language barriers of learning a language. Every day in discussions, I learn new words, expressions, and discussion items, which I use afterwards in real life settings. So there you have it. We have all these wonderful members saying all these delightful things. Thank you so much for sharing those with me. And thank you for investing in yourself, right? This is just the beginning. You have the ability to change the way you communicate, to change, you know, the status quo. You just have to do things a little bit differently. And we do things differently here. I'm always giving you things to challenge yourself, to get outside your comfort zone. As you see in this webinar, you learn something new, right? We're going to apply it now to our lives. So these are relevant strategies that you can apply to work and to your personal lives. And again, with proper, effective communication, it's incredible the doors that you, you get to open. It's incredible the opportunities that you have. It's incredible the people that you, you, you meet and you learn from and you uh, make friends with. So. I, I just, I love it. I'm so happy that you're all here. You clearly value, you know, these investments in yourself and prioritizing communication is at the top of the list. So I love seeing that. Thank you for your participation. I will see you very soon. So I'll be seeing you on Wednesday if you decide to join us in our community. Um, and I'll actually see you sooner than that because I'll see you in the comments of, you know, whatever whatever's going on, whatever we do. You know, as soon as you come in and chat and say hello to people. All right. Well, thank you so much again. And I will see you very soon. Bye for now. Happy exploring, everyone.